Let's have a couple again. All right, so we got this uh, moment problem here. So it's got three parts to it. So we're gonna first find the, the magnitude of the moments, or the magnitude of the forces. Then we're gonna find the angle at which that acts. And then we're gonna find a distance at which we can put another force, or that, uh, that resultant force, and then how it would react, or so it would make the same magnitude as in this case. So let's go ahead and do it, right? So let's uh, let's start with the the the, uh, the resultant force, right? So if we're looking for resultant force, we want to break each one of these forces into its uh, into its vectors, right? So let's go ahead and write vectors for each one of these. So first one, let's break it into a vector, right? So it's 350 is its magnitude. And we're trying to find it in the x direction. So it's acting in the positive x direction. If we're trying to find that, we're going to use cosine of 60, right? Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so if we use cosine 60, it's just going to give us the x direction. Nice. So this net's acting negative in the y, so it's going to be negative 350. And then if we're using y in this case, it's going to be sine. So sine of 60. Nice. So that's force one. Let's do force two. So force two, right? It only acts in the y direction, so there's no x. There's only negative 350. So this acts 600 newtons, but this time it's going negative in the x, so negative 600. And then we can't use cosine this time, right? If we're looking at it, this angle is 30 degrees, so we're going to need to use sine if we want to find this, which is the x direction. So sine of 30. And then again, we're going to use negative 600, and this time it'll be cosine of 30. Cool. So now let's just go ahead and sum these up. So starting in the x direction, sum of the forces in the x direction is equal to 350 cosine of 60 plus 0 minus 600 sine of 30. Nice. And then, of course, this is equal to negative 125 newtons. Um, lose my track on this problem. So then let's do the sum of the forces in the y direction. So this is going to be negative 350 sine of 60 minus 350 minus 600 cosine of 30. Right? Just all of those negative. And then, of course, if you add these up, you're going to get negative uh, 1170 newtons. Cool. So full resort or force resultant, we can go ahead and write that out. That's going to be negative 125i minus 1170j newtons. Cool. So if we're trying to find the magnitude of force resultant, we're just going to take the square root of negative 125 squared plus negative 1170 squared. Looks like a 2. Uh, then if you do this, you're going to get 1180 newtons. There you go. So that's a write that somewhere. Cool. So now we want to find the angle. So the angle, right, we're going to use tangent. So we know we're going to be in the third quadrant, right? It's pointing this direction, negative, negative. So let's go ahead and do tangent. So theta, or tangent of theta, Right, it's going to be opposite over adjacent, so opposite is going to be y, negative 1170, and then adjacent is going to be x, so negative 125. So those are going to cancel out, so it's going to be inverse tangent, 1170 over 125. And what this is going to give you, well, it's going to give you 20.4. Hey guys, Grant from the future here. I put the degrees from this problem, which I just solved after I solved the previous problem, so I put the wrong degree sign, so you're just going to have to bear with me that I'm going to edit this later, and that the actual degrees is 83.9 or degrees counterclockwise from the negative x direction. So just take it with a grain of salt that I accidentally put the wrong number on the board, but I did have the, all the right calculations. So don't worry about that. So yeah, continue with the video. Degrees. So what this 20.4 is, it's the angle from the negative x direction. So. I'm going to write that over here. And if you were to draw what that would look like, it's going to be 
this angle right there from a negative x. Cool. So let's go ahead and do part C. Let me see exactly what part C is asking for again. Um, so we'll specify where the force acts measured at the end A, right? So we're looking for where does force resultant act on this string away from A, right? So we're going to do this. We're going to calculate basically the moment, and then we're going to use that moment in something else. So let's do the moment, right? So moment, if you've watched my previous videos, you kind of know how to do this in two dimensions. So moment of A. So we're going to take force in the x direction and multiply it by distance in the y direction. In this case, there is no distance in the y direction, so we're just going to take the force in the y direction of each one of these multiplied by the uh, dis or the the force in the y direction multiplied by the distance in the x. You can do it for each one of these, but you're going to end up that everything multiplied by the force in the x is going to be also multiplied by zero, so it's going to cancel. So we're going to take negative 350 sine of 60. And then we're going to multiply, because this is force 1, the distance from A to force 1, which is 2 meters. Right? But also, which way is this going to push, right? If we're pushing down on here, it's going to make it go clockwise, so that's going to be a negative. So that makes sense. And then this one is also going to make it go clockwise, which is also going to make it negative. So this is just going to be negative 350. And then this distance is 2 plus 4, so it's going to be 6. Right? Oh, I'm looking at the wrong problem. But yeah, I'm doing this right. Okay, so then we're going to take the next one, 600 cosine of 30, and then its distance is 2 plus 4 plus 3, which is 9. Nice. And then we have to take this, right? So we have this moment already given to us, 100, or 1,500 newton meters, right? But it's going clockwise, so we're going to have to subtract that too. So then we're going to get that our moment. I keep looking at the wrong one, okay. So that's going to be negative 8,800, 8,880, it's doing eights here, uh, newton meters. Nice, so that's our moment of A. So this is going to be important. Not the answer, yet. Uh, I don't think I need this anymore. Go ahead and get rid of all this. Cool. So, what do we know about moment A, right? Well, moment A, equal to force in the x, distance in the y, or plus force y, distance in the x. So we said that there's no distance in the y because it's all on a flat thing. So we're just going to be moving a is force y, distance x. Oh, I did need that. No. Okay, hold on. I mean, uh, I have it right here, actually. Okay, so I forgot to write that down. So it's the first result is negative 125i minus 1170j. So this is our force result in the y, right? This is force y. And then we found a moment here. So if we're looking for distance in the x, right? We're looking for something in meters. That's going to be moment of a over force of y. And this is our force resultant. So all we have to do is take the x is equal to what we found here, negative 8880 eight, over negative 1170. And then this distance ends up being 7.59 meters. So that means if we took our force resultant vector, right, we took this force resultant vector, and we put it at 7.59 meters, which is like right around here, it's gonna result the exact same way as this system here. Let me write that again. 7.59 meters. There we go. So yeah, that's how you do these kind of problems. Uh, it's not too tricky, you just got to know your formulas, and this is a really useful tool. So, see you in the next one, guys. See you later. Peace.